Earlier this year, myself and Nigel Danson got together to embark on one of the most ambitious photography projects that we could think of, the spirit of Luskentire. Three videos filmed across one month when Nigel spent that entire month just photographing one beach. And since we completed that project, it's got me thinking quite a lot about how I work. Not long ago, I released a video up here about working alone and how I prefer to work alone. Obviously this project involved a huge amount of collaboration between me and Nigel, and I think I might have changed my mind about a few things. So I've actually been working with Nigel for the last four and a half years. When I went freelance in March of 2019, Nigel was actually my first client. I had met him before, I met him up Luffrig Fell in the Lake District for an incredible morning of photography. I was completely separate from him and he happened to be up there on a workshop. And we had a bit of a chat and that was that. It wasn't until I left my job to go freelance and Nigel had put a story on Instagram asking for an editor. And the timing was well, we've met before, we live close to each other and thus our working relationship was born. We've worked on a number of pretty ambitious projects over the last four years and I've been helping him out with a number of things on his YouTube channel, particularly over the last year when I have taken on the role of editing his videos and filming some of them as well. Spirit of Luskentai was so ambitious that it was pretty much impossible for Nigel to achieve on his own. So I was able to step in and not just help, but work together with Nigel to be able to complete this project. Collaboration was absolutely key to this being a success. The planning of everything surrounding the filming and the photography was absolutely crucial for this to be anywhere near what we imagined it could be. So the question we had to ask ourselves was, this is a photography project and it has to be led by this, how does this translate into a series? So we needed to work out everything, and I mean everything in advance. The style of the videos, how they were gonna be shot, the decisions made around shooting some of the videos at his house and some of them on location and flitting between the two places throughout. We worked on finding the right music before we even stepped foot on the beach. We worked on what we were gonna do around the story and how the story was gonna drive the video. And the main story was what photographs can be achieved in this month, but we also knew we'd have to rely on mini stories throughout the videos to keep the viewer's attention. We needed to pay attention at every single step of the process to the journey that the viewer was being taken on throughout these videos. It was kind of a dream of both Nigel's and mine to basically make this as close to like something you'd see on Netflix or something you'd see on BBC, but with just a two-man team. And that is insanely difficult. And I just can't understate the amount of work that went into this. And I was only there in Luskentire for the very first week of filming. In fact, I think it was only the first five days of filming. We needed to make sure that Nigel alone could carry on that filming process on his own whilst capturing these images. We needed to make sure that the continuity flowed from one video to the next. And these are kind of big decisions to make in advance before you even know what's gonna happen. So when we got there, when we were on location, it was, it was kind of like some sort of army operation. All the gear needed to be in the right place, fully charged, cleaned all the time. We were dealing with spray from the sea, we were dealing with sand getting into everything, we were dealing with rain, the conditions that first week, as you've probably seen from the video, and if you've not seen the video, it's linked up here and I'd highly recommend you watching it. Everything took an absolute battering in that first week. It was just brutal some of the days. So much so that, unfortunately, I didn't get any real behind the scenes footage. It was just impossible. I, I was holding onto my tripod all the time because the winds were so strong. If I'd let go, it would have just blown over. So I wasn't able to set up another camera and sort of record what we were doing. All my focus was put on documenting as much of this week as possible because we didn't know at that point what all the little intricate stories within the video were gonna be. They were only gonna become apparent as the video went through. We just knew we needed to capture them and make sure that they were there to be followed up as and when we needed to. It was a very physically and mentally demanding week, but I think what we captured in that first week and what went into that first video in the series, I think it's probably the proudest I've been of any of the work that I've done 
and I think from a collaborative point of view the storytelling that went through it the images that supplemented it I think it all came together so well and I think that is not only a testament to the work we put in when we were there and the planning that we did before we went but it's also a testament to the collaboration we had between us that was so key to this and I'm going to just keep saying that again and again so after the project was done it came down to the edit and like I mentioned before a lot of these decisions had already been made in advance but what I wasn't prepared for is just how much work I was willing to put into these edits they are easily the most complicated timelines I've ever worked on I think the first video took me two weeks five days a week to get it through maybe maybe nine days because I'd already started working on the second one and making sure that fit in before I'd finished the first one the same came for the third one and the second two didn't take me quite as long to edit because Nigel was there filming on his own it was just impossible to have the same amount of footage and I probably went overboard as I mentioned in the first week by making sure I did document everything but Nigel did such a good job of filming on his own it's actually incredible that he managed to do that throughout the remaining, I don't know, 23 days of him being there. And the way he was able to follow the stories we were telling throughout actually made my life as an editor a lot easier. It was difficult to kind of bring it all together. And when you don't film something and when you edit something, you kind of got to make sense of it first. And 23 days worth of filming is a lot to make sense of. So from a time perspective, it, it took longer than anything I've ever done before, but it seems like everyone thinks that the end result was absolutely worth it. Something that's really difficult in editing, especially when you've filmed yourself, is that you've got to put the viewer first. You've got to see it through the viewer's eyes. And because I was so heavily invested in this project, that was a really difficult thing for me to do. I was quite emotionally attached to this footage. It meant a lot to me and yeah, it was, it was difficult to cut a lot of it out because it didn't serve the video as a whole. It didn't follow through on the stories and it didn't add anything. And that's something you've got to be pretty brutal as, as an editor. You've always got to put the viewer first and I found that quite difficult for this project. So I wanted to quickly talk about how the collaboration between Nigel and I made this project the success that it was and it was a success. I'll, I'll get on to talking about that a little bit later, but yeah, we were blown away by the feedback to it and continue to be blown away by the feedback. But the main thing that made this a success is the working relationship that Nigel and I have built up together. There's a huge amount of trust and that goes both ways. And it is so necessary to have that if you are working on a project in this way when so much of it is actually done separately. The trust he put in me to not only kind of direct it and try and sort of dictate the style and what was in my head. And I like to think that's been built up through working together for such a long time and the production of previous videos. The second thing which I touched on just then was just like the kind of shared ideas and vision. When you've got something in your head before it starts to take shape, it's really hard to explain. But I think Nigel and I are quite good at explaining that to one another. And we're normally on the same wavelength. And that's through the continued collaboration that we've had that we're able to kind of get to that place quite easily. And obviously communication really helps as well. It's so important to have continual communication throughout this project because there were just so many moving parts all coming together at exactly the same time and I think finally one of the things that tied all this together was just a shared desire to make the best thing that we could possibly make. Okay I'm now here with my Luskan Tire collaboratee Nigel. Um, it's been six months now since the Spirit of Luskan Tire project and Nigel's just had his gallery of the work this weekend which went pretty well I think. Yeah it was Absolutely amazing. It sort of made it real, I suppose. You know, like everyone came rather than just looking at YouTube figures and whatever else, just being able to see everybody and chat to everybody was, it was really, really incredible. I think that was the main thing I took from it because I came on Thursday night and I spoke to a few people, obviously not as many people as you spoke to, but 
just the positive feedback on the images, the videos, I think that just made it so much more real, didn't it? Yeah, I think it did really because you, you do a project like this and then you, you, you put all the effort that we put into it and then you, 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 I don't know, you share it, you get some nice comments, but actually speaking to real people is just so special and I say real people rather than imaginary people, but actually... <laughs> But you know, pe- pe- in, in person, it's and and I don't know. It just it just makes it seem more worthwhile, I suppose. Is, is, is probably the best way of saying it. Yeah, definitely. And I think what I wanted to talk to you about now is just this whole video is about collaboration, and this whole project came to be what it was just through us being able to work together in the way that we did. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on on kind of how that how that went. Yeah, I mean. It, it, amazing. I mean, we get on really well, so that's good. Um, we, and we, and most of the time, um, I think there's two things for me really, which is one, thinking of ideas is difficult when you're on your own. And so if you, you know, it was really nice to be able to, you know, knock ideas backwards and forwards for how the video is going to look and um, you know things like music and all those little things. But when we're on in the field actually recording it, but then when we came back and we were going through the massive editing process, just being able to not together ideas is is really important and then i suppose the some of the parts is greater than each part isn't it really so i think that that was a big thing for us really that's exactly it it's like one plus one if they're not working together you put them together it's just one plus one isn't mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. but with this it's like one plus one is is four yeah de- de- definitely yeah and um i mean with this I think specifically with this project, which was a really big project. I mean, people probably see the the, the videos that we publish every every Sunday, and they probably think, "Oh, well, that was that was a really good video," and we wanted to try and make it sort of. Um, it sounds maybe arrogant a bit, but like sort of BBC standard. You know, we wanted to make it like a real good documentary type um, thing, and people said it was better, but the amount of work that we put into it was exponentially more wasn't it completely agree. <laughs> and i think i think that's probably the main thing to take away from this collaborative process is that even with just a team of two of us you can just achieve an incredible amount yeah i definitely i mean unbelievable the amount of positive feedback we got from this and yeah we just did it just us two didn't we we did one amazing video and story from start to finish. I think everything has been already said below, but this video truly showed what landscape photography can be at its best. Struggle, pain, happiness, joy, coldness, beauty, and great images. This is the best video you've done in my opinion. I can't wait for the next episode. Great work, Nigel and Rick. Reading all the comments like that and hearing them in the flesh at the gallery last week was just absolutely incredible. And it means so much to both me and Nigel and just makes us both really proud of what we achieve with this project. If this is one of the first videos you've seen from me, I'm currently embarking on a six month YouTube challenge where I'm doing the A to Z of camera creativity. And this is let's see, hence collaboration. Not actually sure what I'm doing next week for D yet, but I'll work that out in advance of then. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when the next video is out. And also I've got a link below to a newsletter that supplements these videos where I try and give a little bit of creative inspiration, maybe set some challenges and that goes out every fortnight. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, there's a link in the description below. So what have I realized about collaboration this year since I recorded that video last December. It's kind of a tricky one. I have always wanted to isolate myself to some degree and over this year I've realized the reasons behind that and they're not the reasons that I thought they were. It's more a tendency to avoid probably difficult situations rather than a preference to working that way. I don't think I do suit a really busy working environment, not at all, but I do suit having some people around and working together with some people some of the time. Sometimes I wanna just go off on my own, make a video, take some photos, and I get an enormous amount of satisfaction from that. But sometimes I absolutely love working with other people as well. I've had so much fun working with Nigel over the past four years. 
And it's really struck me this year how important that continued collaboration with him is. I don't think it's necessarily the right thing for everyone working collaboratively, but I'm glad I've learned this year that I prefer doing that to what I thought I preferred, which was working alone. So maybe have a think about how you can introduce collaboration a little bit into your creative work. You don't have to work on projects with other people, but I think just communicating, sharing ideas, spending time with other people with similar interests can be really beneficial. If you go on a photography shoot with someone else, just, just kind of having that connection, you might find that you don't get better photographs because you can't focus as well. But I think just periodically having that connection and a shared interest can be really beneficial in the long term. So I hope that is something that you will give a go. It's important to find, I think, a balance between working on your own and working with others and where you fit in between those things is completely down to your personal preference. I really hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. I've enjoyed talking about the project again and kind of reliving it through this. Obviously I had an absolutely amazing time shooting it and as I continue to work with Nigel if there is anything else you'd like to know about the things that we produce together then give me a shout in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.